Well, first, I thank you to the organisers for um, giving us the opportunity to speak to you. And I have to confess up first, up front, that I'm a, a total imposter. I'm actually an Aegean prehistorian who has recently migrated a bit up north and I've been uh, looking at uh, later Bronze Age societies in the southern Carpathian Basin and Balkans. Uh, the material that we are going to be looking at is from this region here. So we're pretty much defined by the River Moresh, the Tisa, the Danube, and then the Carpathians to the east. Speaking broadly speaking, about the period 1500 to 1100 BC. Now many of you, um, sorry, will know some of the some of the sites in this area. Though we have recently been discovering quite a large number of settlements, uh, which have previously been undocumented. So we're getting a very densely settled landscape here with a lot of uh, enclosed settlements. And again, uh, this is due to the, some of the wonders of Google Earth, that uh, for the later Bronze Age uh, sites in this area, they're actually visible quite clearly from uh, Earth imagery. With You can see ditches, you can see these uh, patches here, which are very characteristic of these sites. So we've been able to define quite a large number of these in this landscape, all kind of lining up along the teaser. And ground truthing of these are showing them to be late Bronze Age in chronology. Uh, this is part of a landscape where we have some really astoundingly large settlements. Uh, probably the best known of these is going to be Corneshti Arcuri, which is over 1,700 hectares. Uh, we don't quite have sites of that scale, but the sites we have are very large by comparison, what you might expect. So the likes of Gradish de Ijosh, which we're excavating, uh, is uh, in the region of about 200 hectares. And then other sites in the settlement network, the upper order ones are around 100 plus hectares, and these are all defined by, um, by uh, ditches, which so are clearly bounded spaces. And even the relatively small sites in this network will be somewhere around the 25, 30 hectare range. So these are very extensive, large settlements. This uh, work is part of a broader project that I'm conducting. Um, as I say, I'm a slight imposter, but uh, uh, from the Aegean, because the project I'm doing is uh, looking at uh, changes in later Bronze Age society mobility and conflict really from uh, the Carpathians right down to the Aegean world. I'm not going to be speaking about that now, but we're covering quite a range of different research methods. Um, uh, some of these uh, are very much in process at the moment, so we have even not even pilot data to give you. But just speaking a little bit about the chronology of these settlements, we all know in a very, very general sense, these kind of um, boundaries. So I mean, I know the session about Urnfield uh, doesn't really work in this area. Um, the kind of chronologies we're looking at, uh, conventionally Belgish 1, Belgish 2, it's all the Gava and Gucci variants. Uh, it seems with our C14 dating, we're pushing the beginning of that a bit earlier, the end of it is still a little bit fuzzy, um, but really this looks like it's going to have to be broken in too. Um, but how this fits in, I mean in our region you're looking at, again, this is these settlements are occurring right around the time of the collapse of, if you want to call it a collapse, of... Um, when tell settlements were at the uh, core of, um, of settlement dynamics. So very messy picture. And that really is, uh, what well, the slide is quite messy. It's a lack of C14 dates, C14 dates really to anchor the local relative chronologies. So that's something we're very much working on at the moment. Uh, the site that we have, uh, Gradish to Ijush, is located here. You can see that it is in proximity, well, about as safe a proximity as you can get to the River Tisa. That big mess of uh, areas there is the Tisa uh, the floodplain. So it's located over here. And we have rivers, uh, small rivers lining up here, leading you out to the Tisa. But along those rivers, we have all of these tumuli, which um, have been identified. And again, none of these have been as yet excavated. So we are looking at that so they could be of any date, um, of er probably preceding or contemporary with the settlement. Uh, but even if you take those preceding, if you're moving through this landscape, you're going to that settlement, you are going through this very visible mortuary landscape. Um, again, especially if you imagine people traveling along these watercourses, which it's not very, coming out very clearly in this, but you can still also see the paleo channels uh, quite clearly in, in these uh, satellite imagery. The site itself, um, we have conducted geophysics of about 18 hectares which is giving, giving us, um, I suppose, a good view of what was, we believe, to be the core of the settlement. But this whole area that we're looking at here is actually just this tiny little green patch down here. So give you a sense of the scale of it and, I suppose, some of the challenges of investigating a site of this uh, size. But again, even the geophysics showing there's uh, obviously a hell of a lot more happening in terms of enclosures and boundaries and spaces than we're seeing from the aerial imagery. 
Uh, the cemetery is just off this aerial shot, uh, just down here. Um, I apologize for the quality of the, of the slide here, um, but the cemetery was excavated in the 60s in three different um, uh, rescue campaigns due to the construction of a new uh, river channel, or new uh, channel from the Teaser River. So we have both inhumation and cremation graves within this cemetery. Just putting it in its context there, again, it's along one of these channels. So we have got these tumuli lining up, so it's pretty much running along the same sort of orientation and the same landscape as the, the tumuli here, which again, I say, remain undated at, at present. Uh, from the cemetery, we've got quite a range of, um, of chronologies. We are looking really at uh, covering the, the whole spread of this uh, Balagish 1, uh, Balagish 2 kind of ceramic range uh, in very broad kind of bands. In, in these upper ones are an earlier chronology. We've got these lower types down here. Uh, in terms of dating, uh, this is a uh, currently under study by Linda Fibiger. This is um, adult and child inhumation grave. And again, the C14 dating on this, putting it um, in here around the uh, later 15th century into the 14th century. Uh, we have a slightly earlier in, in, um, inhumation grave from the same cemetery, just an individual. And in this case, we're looking at a 15th century date. But where it becomes, I suppose, a challenge is when we are doing, looking to the settlement. And again, the ceramics that we have there are very much similar to those that we have in the cemetery. So again, that kind of what's in the settlement we're finding in the cemetery, although perhaps we're getting slightly more elaborate ceramics even on the settlement than we are finding in the cemetery. The dates for this again, this, these are the, if we're looking at those very typical Urnfield, um, I suppose, format of burial that we're having in the cemetery, we're looking at the chronology of the very similar pots from the site. We don't yet have the C14 dates from the cemetery, they're in process at the moment. But the same sort of ceramics from the site, uh, we're getting uh, late 15th, um, dates uh, really, I suppose, more looking at beginning around 1400 BC would appear of these dates. So 14th century um, sort of chronology for the ceramics that we're finding. Again, we find that that's in a pit. We have a ditch excavated as well near to the entrance of the site. And again, similar to these uh, urn objects which you're going to find in the cemetery, we're getting those with very clear dates of the uh, 14th century. Uh, creeping into possibly into the 13th century, but most of the dates are lining up that slightly bit earlier. We also have here similar kind of wares in an outer ditch here. So again, looking at 14, possibly getting into the 13th century uh, for those. So again, these are the kind of set, uh, ceramics we're getting on the settlement, which are going to be contemporary in terms of style to what we are finding in the cemetery. And again, when we look at the chronology of the inhumations that we have, this is, again, lining up with the uh, later inhumation. We're getting these urnfield-type ceramics. So we do need, obviously, to get our dates from those urns, which would be helpful for the formations. But we are getting this kind of crossover into very beginning stages. So a bi-ritual cemetery evolving into a um, uh, purely cremation cemetery. The cremation remains, uh, again, not a lot collected. These are 1960s excavations, so we're not quite sure at the moment. Is this not a lot actually retained by the excavators? Uh, or is it that there are only very, very small uh, representative amount actually in some of these uh, creations? But the fragments are relatively large, so we have been, again, as of this summer, conducting research, so I'm afraid I have zero results to give you at this point on those analyses. Um, other than we have got several graves with uh, two or three individuals, uh, generally speaking, adults and children. From the settlement, uh, we have other strange things happening. Uh, we are getting human remains in the ditches surrounding the settlements. Uh, surrounding settlement, and again, uh, these are from that same sort of period as some of the burials in the cemetery, possibly going that little bit later. But uh, we seem to have evidence of manipulation of the deceased, and welcome opinions on this. But this is one of the crania from the uh, parts of the crania from the ditch, and the hole you see there is actually punctured from the inside of the skull out. So this is not an injury; uh, it's, it's uh, post mortem, not even peri mortem, very so uh, soon after death. Um, but not too soon, um, but uh, we're not sure on this. Is this an element of this skull being displayed at the entrance to the site? Because it's right up on these entrance ditches of the causeway through it. So if it is, it's perhaps with a face looking up to the sky. Alternatives might be an injury. Is this from an arrow being shot with a charred wooden headed arrow rather than having an actual uh, arrow head on it? 
uh, puncturing at high velocity from uh, from the back. So some possibilities there. We do have bronze arrowheads from the ditches, so we know that they were not necessarily only using those kind of, um, uh, I suppose, more improvised types of arrows. But again, it's not just, these, these are two separate ditches that we have. And again, the chronology of these, we're sitting around that uh, 1430 to 12th uh, to early 13th century, probably. And then we look at other sites, uh, going a little bit further north, Czech Republic, Belém. Uh, we are also getting that uh, kind of uh, same sort of chronology where we have human remains being manipulated and, re and used in the ditches. Uh, there's material that will be published, I know, uh, by colleagues uh, working in Romania from two of the sites there, where there's also the same sort of chronology we're having these human remains uh, manipulated in the ditches. Uh, we also have, from other settlements, um, <coughs> we have uh, from just south of the site that we're excavating, Gradish to Ijosh, about 20 kilometres south, we have Maliakac, where again we have a juvenile buried in the settlement context, uh, at Shagu. Uh, site one, we also have here a, um, a neonate um, buried uh, in the settlement context, or at least the cranium buried in the settlement context. Uh, when we're moving a bit later into the early Iron Age, we get actually accentuation of this reuse and manipulation of human remains in the ditches around settlements. So another site we're studying, Clisa, probably around the 9th century, 10th, 9th century, we're writing again C14 dates on this. It's just been studied this summer. But again, we have crania lined up, so you've got reuse of skeletal elements in the ditches surrounding settlements. So I think we, this is something that we're quite eager to do um, ancient DNA analysis on. So we have some of these have uh, been examined at the moment. And I stop, stable isotope analysis to see, are we getting some sort of social differentiation between those who are included in cemeteries and those who are not, um, not being interred in such a fashion? Um, so in this very little brief uh, discussion of what uh, we've been looking at in, in this region, we can say that uh, this transition from tumulus to urnfield uh, chronological events brackets is bracketed by the building of these major uh, large settlements um, in this region. And again, we seem to be at the border of where you get this extensive use of tumuli as a burial practice uh, to areas where flat cemeteries are more dominant. Uh, the urnfield mortuary rites were initially uh, within a bi-ritual context, but before, um, really by the fully by the 14th century, possibly by the 16th century, we're starting to get them being used as the dominant form. And again, that's the cemetery that extends from around that period right through, again, at least on relative chronologies, going down into the 12th century. Um, not all the individuals that we are seeing at this settlement, and again, we've only excavated, I guess, maybe 10 metres worth of ditch. We're finding these individuals. There's an older excavation where there was a radius found in one of the ditches, so it seems that we are getting human remains spread quite widely throughout these ditches, and they're, again, colossal, so we only excavated small portions. But uh, so not all individuals are making the graves in this area. We are finding potentially the manipulation and the use, even the defleshing of these bodies, whatever fashion it might have been. But they're disarticulated when they're making it into the ditches. So where they were previous to that, we don't really know, obviously. Um, and again, this is on the peripheries and the entrance into sites. Uh, the ones we found so far are actually at the entrances. So we are getting them deposited right at the entrance into the, into the settled area. We have that around uh, in the dead in the ditches uh, in the region around um, Gredish to Ijosh, but also it does seem to be at least increasing. We have other sites in Romania where we have um, the manipulation of, uh, of larger numbers of individuals in the early Iron Age. And again, we have at the moment stabilised open nature DNA analysis being conducted on these um, by Hannah Schroeder and uh, Cheryl Makarovitz in Kiel. Um, and we're going to use these to better char characterise really the biographies of these individuals and try to explore really what is happening in terms of uh, the different uh, paths to take uh, before being uh, interred. So, thank you.